to finish off on this block of videos of building a terrain and setting a scene, kind of look at the ambience. How does the scene look? How does it also feel? Okay? How do we manipulate ambience and get that sense of our scene? What we're looking for is the render settings. So we'll go to our reference in the documentation. Scroll down. And here we have render settings. So here's the documentation information on the render settings. See, we can add some things, mainly fog and ambient light, and also, actually, importantly, is the skybox. So here's your information. Let's see where we can find these settings and let's play around with them. I'm going to Unity. Hopefully, you've got a scene built and ready to have a look at. So first, let's work on the sky boss because that does look very pop. There's not something quite right about that sky. Unity comes with some sky boxes. So we go to Import Package, Sky Boxes. Some of the sky boxes provided. Import those. Okay, and we'll find them in the standard assets because they are standard assets that come with Unity. And there we have the sky boxes. We have our materials already created. That gives you a rough idea of what to expect from the sky boxes. Actually, the picture view is not great. I'm better off looking at the preview textures there. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of textures that have been made, all ready to go. They've been added to a material. So how do we add these to our scene? We're going to Edit, Render Settings. Okay, and then similar to what we saw in the documentation, we have this in our Inspector Settings. So here we have the Skybox material. Just experiment with a couple and see how they look. Okay. Now, of course, you can just hit play and play test and look around. I'll show you how to bring it into the edit window. If you look up at the icons here, you see one like a picture frame. If you click on that, there we go. Picture frame, kind of like it being rendered. It sits with our ring settings quite well. So there we have it. Somewhere where we can quickly preview these sky boxes. So next is the evening one. So you can see what's happening here. Just drop your sky box material into the render settings. You can have a look around. I might demonstrate the render settings with a couple of scenes. So let's start with the evening one I like. There we go. Okay, so how do we set up this scene to give it some ambience and give it a feel of depth and space and real worldness? Okay, so we've added a skybox, that's a fantastic start. Now we hit play. See there's some parts of the terrain that are dark and light. Of course this is kind of like an bit of a natural shadow effect from the directional light pointing in a certain direction so where would that come from that light? If we look in our sky box, there we go, we can see an obvious light source the sun in our case so it's safe to assume that the light would emit from that sun now if we look, we're looking at the sun so you can imagine behind us should be lit so if we look around to the mountains they're in dark, that doesn't quite feel right this is an easy fix. Our light in our scene comes from two places. First of all, we have our directional light, which is the most strongest influence here. So what we can do is we can line up our directional light. I can find the sun again. There's the sun. What we can do 
see how directional light already has rays coming from it to try and indicate the direction that the light is traveling. Neat little trick. You can just manipulate the rotation. We're looking right at the sun, it would be fair to say that the rays, the rays of light are heading directly towards us. So you can see that if I move it, see those rays of light? I'll spin them around. It's quite hard to see like that. The light source is very nice, so we know the light's there, we can just click off the sky box again. Now you can see much clearer what I'm trying to do. See those light rays, they're pointing in that direction. You can see that affecting. As I said, if we're looking at the light source, the light's coming directly towards us. There you go, that looks like it's heading in our direction. Let's bring in the sky box again. Okay, so that's looking good. Now we can immediately test this out in our scene. That must be underneath the world. Certainly am. Okay, so if we include the sky box, looking at the rays coming down like that, the sun is somewhere up there. Let's test it in our scene, just like before. Hit play. A little run around. There's our light source. There's our sun. You can see the sun's shining down here, so a little bit of a shadow on those surfaces. We turn around. There we go, that hill that was all dark before, it's now lit up as it should be. Let's just try to bring in some realism between our skybox and our scene. We have a light source, we have the rays of light pointing in the direction of the light source, and showing up on our scene. We're going towards the source and see if we can find a better example of a hill like this. I'll just speed up the character controller here. Movement. There we go, that's a better kind of test. We see the light's pointing towards us there, so that part of the hill would be in shadow. Alright, fantastic. So there's our light source. Okay, so that's adding a skybox and orienting our directional light to reflect the information from the skybox, particularly the light source. While we're on the directional light, we've left that as a default colour. Since this is emulating our sun, let's give it a bit of a warm sun field. If I change it to something extreme, you can see how that light's being affected. Adding a bit of a warm sort of glow to it. Okay, so that's a start. Now, as I said plenty of times in the terrain, terrains and setting the scene is something you should spend a lot of time on. That's why introducing it at the start is probably not the best idea, but people want to build things, so this is how we set it up. Look at our directional light. Okay, what else do we have in our render settings? Okay, fog. Now, you don't have to think of fog immediately as fog. This can be like a haze. Something to give contrast to our scene, especially depth. As we go off into the distance here, we want to get a sense of haze. So let's just first turn the fog on and what do we have? Now we have some fog, and that's looking a bit too dense, isn't it? So we have a couple of values here. The fog mode, the best way of describing this, I can imagine, is how much the fog gets applied the further away you get from your character. So the first one is linear, so this is just a gradual step off of the fog, as you can see that drop down there. So exponentially adding fog means as you take a step away the fog will double, you take another step and the fog will double again, so it starts to add it stronger for the depth, and then exponential, exponential squared. Yeah, that wasn't quite seem like it's squared. So it's somewhere between linear and exponential exponential squared. Okay, so I still think that's too much for our scene that we're trying to build here, so we have linear. Now, of course you have your fog density here too. Now if I start playing with a slider, see this is a very not in the linear. 
we're working ah of course because we're working in linear let's work in exponential you see I'm working in exponential I'm adjusting the fog density with the sliders it's very sensitive so let's bring it back to the default and for our scene for something like this we want to drop it down a bit more okay that's starting to get there and as you saw while I was clicking around there if we're using linear Using these values again. Okay. Where does the bug drop in? And how far away before it starts to get really strong here? Okay, so you can use your linear setting for a day setting, a day scene like this. Okay, that's a perfectly reasonable setting right there. Not far off the default. Building it there. Like I said, this is a very sensitive number. Will affect the scene greatly as soon as you hear. I think I might do that. Of course, when you make any changes, first play test them. Hello, tree. I'm going to permanently increase the speed of this character control. Okay, so. Popping out across there, that's a bit dark. So while we're in pause, let's try and manipulate some of these again. Okay. Get a sense of perspective there, don't we? That's looking pretty good. Let's continue playtesting. Back across these cliffs. Yeah, that's great. Get clear and visible. But as we set off into the distance, those trees. It's better off on that side. And those trees back there, you can see. On a haze. There we have it. As I said, I'm going to ramp up the speed of the movement of the first person controller. Let's bring it to at least 80. We can walk around our scene and test it. So that's adding fog to our scene to give it a sense of depth. Okay. The last values in the Redis settings I wanted to have a look at was this ambient light. So you can see how this affects things. Now, if we turn disable our directional light, you see our scene still has some lighting. This is what's known as the ambient light. It's got like a light reflection throughout the whole scene. And again with these little icons here, from your scene view you can adjust the plane view, or you can see the ambient light being added. So let's just play with the ambient light to see what's happening. Okay. See, even without a light source, we do have light in our scene, and this is coming from the ambient light. Something else I picked up was you have to have a little bit of contrast. To match the warmth of our sun, or our directional light, Give this a bit of a cool color. Okay, so again, this is something you just have to play with yourself in your own scene till you get a feel and a setting that you actually like. So I'll leave it there. But this is just mainly to show you. First, where the render settings are, and what these values do in the render settings. Okay, so that's for like an afternoon kind of setting. Cool. Of course, when you make any changes, I haven't enforced this yet, but anytime you make a change and you play tested it, save it. You never know what's going to happen. Always save your scene. Okay, so that's one 
setup that I've set the ambience up for. Let's have a look for all the slender people. I will save that scene. So this is like my evening setup. And again, for all the slender people, I'm creating a new scene. I'll show another example. Let's try night. So first up, we want to change our skybox. We have a starry night. Let's see that in our scene. Quite ominous, quite dark. I think the warmth to it. What else? It's quite stormy for a different setting. I think this is what I settled with in my first one an eerie skybox. It's not too bad. It's dark, but it's open. Help give you a sense of direction. So as you can see, immediately our original settings aren't really suited to this scenario that we've got here. Let's go back to the fog. Let's bring it back to its default first. And then look what we can do to change the colour of that. Things out quite a lot in the distance, so I'll make that quite dark. But there we go. See now these things are less washed out, but they do give a sense of depth. It's very dark out there. And similarly for our ambient light, because this is a nighttime setting, we really don't want the scene lit up. Let's bring that right now. Of course, I still have the directional light in this scene, so I can just disable it, or we can delete it. That's where I should have started for a nighttime scene. So now just working with the ambient light. There we go. Of course, it's not going to be much to look at without a light source now. See the contrast there? It's very much looking like a nighttime setting. Okay, so that's it. Like I've shown you where it is, but as you've seen, it really is a matter of how your scene is and how you want it to look and how you want it to feel. So go into the render settings and don't be afraid to play with all these values. Now, as I said, I've just made settings and I'm happy with them, so I'm going to save this scene. And as I was just describing, so yeah, don't be afraid to have a muck around. Play with these different settings. Okay. Let's go back to that again. I said, don't be afraid to try out a few different things. And there we go. Okay, have fun.